Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and we have something super exciting to review today, something I've been waiting quite a while to actually come out, and not very long to arrive, honestly. Once I had realized these were on Everything Dinosaur for sale, I had placed an order, and they were here with lightning quickness, as usual, from Everything Dinosaur, so if you are going to purchase these, I highly recommend going with Everything Dinosaur. Do not go with Big Bad Toy Store. They've just been unbelievably slow when it comes to shipping for so long. Everything Dinosaur will have these guys to you in no time, but as you can see, we are looking at the Disney's Dinosaur variation of the Carnotaurus from Rebor, but we also have... The Icrix and Atosaurus from Rebor as well, which is basically the Disney's Dinosaur Carnotaurus, but a different paint scheme and minus the horns, which is obviously a very similar looking species to a Carnotaurus. Although I will say that the Acrix and Atosaurus is definitely not an accurate interpretation of that species. It is an incredibly cool version of the species as far as that figure goes, but the box art is pretty much your standard Rebor box art. You can see we have this nice black background backdrop, and then on the back we just have basically the opposing figure, which is of course the Carnotaurus, and then the Acrix and Atosaurus, also stating that they are available. So let's go ahead and break these out of the boxes right now. I must say that I do miss when Rebor used to include those kind of information sheets that they would always have. They're actually more like an information card that they would always have in the package with the dinosaurs. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem as though they do that very often anymore, and this set does not actually include it. But luckily for us, everything dinosaur, again, if you order from them, actually steps up and does include information sheets. If you are not familiar with everything dinosaur, I will consistently tell you to just order from them because they are fantastic and again they always give you an information sheet on the species that you purchased so that you are informed as much as possible of the dinosaur itself and there's the Ecrix and Atosaurus information sheet as well with just tons of stuff to read so on top of getting some awesome dinosaurs you get some awesome information sheets. But here is our Ecrix and Atosaurus, and we'll go ahead and pull this out of its little baggie here and get a first look at it. And wow, that thing is just beautiful looking. That looks really, really nice. Actually, without the horns, it just looks so different, honestly, from the Carnotaurus version. I don't want to let it go here as it'll probably topple over without the tail helping it balance. So I'm not going to just drop our dinosaur over. And of course, the tail is, again, included within a plastic sheet like that and uh, well I guess plastic bag and then you have to put the tail on just slide that in there and now our Ecrix and Atosaurus is standing beautifully as it does of course need the tail to balance just like in real life we also have our Carnotaurus sitting over here so we'll move the Ecrix and Atosaurus out of the way there and then bring the Carnotaurus in wow that is just gorgeous. That is really, really nice. That honestly was like breathtaking pulling this out and taking a look at it right there because I'm a huge fan of the Disney's dinosaur film. I always have been. So I've been kind of waiting years to get a really good interpretation model wise of that dinosaur. The toys from that film just don't cut it. They're really nice. I absolutely love the toys from the film, but the toys just aren't model quality. And obviously this Carnotaurus certainly is. So we'll go ahead and put that tail on there now. And we've got both massive beasts as far as these figures go standing here before us. And they look just gorgeous. Absolutely incredible looking are both of them. And it's actually really quite impressive to me how different they really truly look once uh, you take away the horns and just give them an alternate paint job. They honestly look so different from each other, but at the same time having very obvious similar appearances really really cool looking at first glance so let's go ahead and get a closer look right now we will start with our Carnotaurus and straight away you can see how absolutely gorgeous the detailing aspect of this Carnotaurus is the actual texturing to the face is just phenomenal really really nice scale detail all throughout the entire head sculpt of this Carnotaurus I like that they've kind of darkened the areas around the eye there, kind of giving it like a wash, it seems, like a darker wash, to make that detail pop out quite beautifully. But in general, the figure has a really nice dark wash to the face. Like, you can see each and every scale pops so beautifully down here on the lower jaw, thanks to that dark wash. Same deal up here. All of that texturing to the skin just looks incredible with the way that they've applied that wash. And you can see some, like, 
really nice kind of off whites that they've applied to the lower jaw up here in the snout and also up here around the eye area running down back behind the head. You can see the ears are very nicely sculpted out and highlighted with a darker coloration similar to what we see up here in the nostril of our Carnotaurus. The wash has also been added to the horns which is painted with pretty much the same color it seems as what we see up here. Actually maybe it's a little bit of a brighter color of like a white up here on the horns and you can also see that the nice wash has been applied there kind of like a grayish wash so it's not quite as dark but really also highlights the detailing of the horns as well of course we've got an articulated jaw and wow that's really really smooth sometimes when you get a figure like this and you initially open the jaw the jaws are really stiff and you have to kind of force them open and break them in but that is not the case with this carnotaurus right there he just opened his jaw instantly with no problems whatsoever and I'm always a giant fan of the inside of the mouth of Rebor figures. I always get excited just to take a look at it and see how realistic it looks. Because continuously, I would say, it's always a toss-up between Rebor and Nanmu to see who can create the most realistic-looking inside of the mouth to a dinosaur figure. And it always just blows my mind how good they look continuously. And as you can see, the inside of the mouth of this Carnotaurus is 1000% realistic and lifelike, sporting an incredible gloss coat, as well as just some really nice detailing and paintwork. There definitely seems to have been like a, uh, a wash added in there so that that detail pops and also just has a really nice realistic look to it. There's like a light kind of a dry brushing potentially over it as well with like a very light coloration and there's like a darker pink kind of wash it's really incredible how realistic the tongue is the sculpting of the tongue also looks fantastic but the actual paintwork and the way they've applied that gloss coat just makes it look so realistic and then the teeth as always have that really nice kind of a translucent type of a look which just make them look again about as lifelike and realistic as it gets just incredibly well done in every way the inside of the mouths of rebor figures is just off the charts gorgeous you could see every ounce of detail throughout the entire inside of the mouth very highly detailed and beautifully painted as always and now that we're actually over here on this side of the head you can see that this side of the head is super nice looking as far as of course both the sculpt and the paintwork again and that jaw just works so perfectly as we start to move back here into the neck of the carnal taurus you can see how big and bulky and intimidating the animal looks you've got like ridges that run along the back as well as ridges that just generally run along the course of the body in certain areas almost like osteoderm like ridges but they get uh, bigger as you get higher into the body and definitely have more of a ridgeline like look up there you can see some osteoderms poking up here and there in the lower jaw as well but the neck region of the carnal torus is so big and beefy it's just so intimidating looking and you can also see kind of like some hanging skin here in the throat region lots of really nice creasing going on beautiful skin wrinkles in the neck showing some of the movement of the carnal torus and you also have those really beautiful shades of like purples that the carnal torus sports in the Disney's dinosaur film as you get down into the body this texturing to the skin just continues to look incredible like the whole way down the neck you can see how beautiful that scale detail is and the paintwork on this is just top notch it just really looks perfect as far as the carnal taurus from the Disney's dinosaur film goes you can see even up here in the back like there's like a grayish wash that kind of pops out in between the scales it just looks so nice Really nice skin wrinkles and stuff down here around the arm as we lead out into the arm. You can see the arm is the same color here as the underside. You have those kind of ridges that run along the back of the arm, which is exactly what you see on the Carnotaurus in the film. Again, the really nice wash allows all of the detailing in the arm to pop beautifully. You can see the nice scoots down the fingers as well as some decent muscle tone right there in the arm. More really nice skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff as you lead back up into the body. Actually, I didn't even mention that the nails are painted. They're painted really nicely with a black coloration for the nails. They look beautiful and very nicely applied. You can see the rib cage a little bit right here in the stomach region. Again, the really nice osteoderm-like look. They kind of taper off right here as they uh, disappear in every one of these rows except for the ridge line up here. They do pick back up, however, back here into the tail. You can see the hip bone right here, really nicely elaborated from the skin. Very beautiful looking muscle tone as well as the skin detailing here in the leg just looks incredible. Like You can see lots of creasing and skin wrinkles and stuff the entire way down that 
thigh area it's just beautiful as far as the actual texturing to the skin goes you have a very nice calf muscle as well bulging and looking very intimidating you can kind of see the kneecap present right here in the front of the carnal torus as you lead down into the foot the foot looks beautiful and again the dark wash that they've applied makes every ounce of that detail pop in perfect fashion really nice scoots down the course of the toes really nicely painted toenails as well they have a bit of a glossy look so they shine quite realistically and they are painted with a black you can see the dewclaw is present right there very nicely painted which is great to see because occasionally dewclaws do tend to get skipped on dinosaur figures as you move back up into the body you can see those osteoderms and those ridges and stuff pick back up as we lead out the length of the tail the Ridges along the back continue to run down. They don't cease anywhere. They stick through the entire figure. These ones do, again, taper off in the thigh region and hip region, but they pick back up back here. The skin detail, again, looks phenomenal. You can see some more really nice skin wrinkling and stuff going on right there. The actual texturing to the skin looks great as we continue to run out the course of the tail with that picture. Perfect looking Disney's dinosaur Carnotaurus style tail. Again, very reminiscent of the way it appears in the film. We do have a wire in the tail so it can articulate, giving you some really nice possibilities as far as posing your Carnotaurus, which is something that I always love about the Rebor figures. The underside as well just looks fantastic detail wise. You can see how beautiful that skin texture just pops because of the nice wash that's included it just looks great and you can really get a good sense of the structure of the body as you move through even some chest muscles right there and even the detailing here on the underside of the feet is really nicely done rebor does not skip any section of their figures they really go the extra mile to make sure it looks as beautiful as possible same type of detailing on this side as we had seen on the previous side. Again, really nice creasing and everything. Lots of really nice skin folds and skin wrinkles within the neck. Seems like there's a little bit less creasing because the Carnotaurus has its head turned slightly to the right. So it has more of like a stretching over here going on, but not that much because it's not that sharp of a turn. As you lead back here into the body, you can see yet again the rib cage a little bit right there. We see a little less of the stomach on this side because the left leg is taking a nice step forward, kind of blocking some of the stomach detail tail right there but also showing us how immense the thigh and calf are of this carnal torus but you can see that the arm sculpt again looks really nice over here pretty much the same as we had seen on the previous side as it's just kind of sticking out straight forward almost in the same position that we had seen on the previous side you do see some more really nice skin wrinkles there around the arm as well as leading back here into the stomach region the texturing to the skin continues to look incredible and again is brought out with the really nice washes that they've applied to the figure you do have those ridges and stuff that stop right here those osteoderms that stop in the hip and thigh area you can see the really nice muscle tone again in this leg just like we had seen in the previous leg really nice skin wrinkles and stuff again i love the detailing as far as like the skin detail right there in the thigh area leading down into the calf the calf is super huge and bulging again we see the really nice foot sculpt again just like the carnal taurus had in the film beautiful wash applied to make the detail all pop you can see the dew claw now on the opposing side and then we lead back up here into the tail you can see how the skin is stretching off of the tail really nicely with this carnal taurus taking a nice step forward and the tail just looks phenomenal the entire way out just like we had seen on the previous side the purples taper off to this same off white type of a color that we see here on the underside of the carnal taurus so as far as a disney's dinosaur style carnal taurus goes this is gorgeous and then we've got our ecrix and Edosaurus, and this as well is beautiful you could see that similarly to the carnal taurus we have a really nice wash that's been applied to the figure making all of the detail just pop and jump out at you so beautifully of course the sculpt is the same on this minus the head sculpt being slightly altered with the lack of horns which you can actually take note to the fact that uh the horns were present and we've just excluded them here it's you know pretty well hidden but you can see it a little bit but the head sculpt again looks really nice and without the horns it just for some reason to me looks so different than the carnal taurus does i don't know why it just looks so different to me but obviously very similar it just i think it looks really nice and gives this ecrix and source again its own personality it doesn't just look like the carnal taurus minus the horns like it's a really cool figure in its own right as well and you have some beautiful tones of like a yellowish brown throughout this figure and there's like lighter and darker tones very realistically painted as far as the different tones of color that they've given it and you can see it like 
really nicely darkens up here at the top like you have some really nice dark shades of color up here you also have like some black stripes here on the side that run down the course of the thigh region differently than the carnal torus we have this brownish coloration that runs down the course of the arms on the carnal torus we had the lighter coloration of the underside that overtook the arms you don't see that here you can see that the nails and everything are painted really nicely and uh, we do have a similar kind of an off-white actually more of like a gray here to the underside of the Egrix and Atosaurus but the eye is really nicely highlighted with a darker coloration similarly to what we had seen on the carnal torus but this one's actually just like straight up painted in the eye socket area whereas the carnal torus had kind of like a wash applied so yet again it has quite a bit of difference to it the eye on this one appears to be painted with a really nice reddish coloration given a black pupil and i love that red eye it just looks so nice with the darker coloration of the overall body of this figure that red eye just pops so beautifully and it also sports a really nice very realistic gloss coat on there as well there is actually a, a gloss coat there on the nostrils as well which i don't know if the disney dinosaur carnotaurus had that i don't recall it but it probably did i may have just skipped over that but i definitely see a bit of a gloss coat there in the nostrils of this figure which i really do like that's something that is a potentially realistic aspect of dinosaur figures the inside of the mouth on this one sports more of a purplish coloration in here as the other one had more of like a flesh tone almost kind of a pinkish color but this one definitely sports a really nice purple color and there seems to be a really nice wash included in here as well just like we had seen on the carnal torus but this is like a darker purple with a little bit of a lighter purple and again it meshes so well as far as the coloration of the mouth goes sporting a very realistic and lifelike look given a gorgeous gloss coat if i could just get in here to take a look at the inside of the mouth again it's painted perfectly everywhere glossed perfectly everywhere the teeth as well sport that very same translucent type of a look like we had seen on the carnal torus so they also look 1000 percent lifelike or carnal torus is kind of getting in the way down here of the tail of the acrix and atosaurus but you can definitely see how incredible the inside of the mouth looks on this figure and just like the carnal torus that mouth is really smooth with the way it operates like there was no trouble at all in opening that the dinosaur does not have any type of like a really flashy paint scheme. I think it's a really nice, very realistic looking paint scheme. Definitely something that I could 100% see this species being color wise. And it's all applied beautifully as far as the paintwork goes. Again, with some really nice washes. Like you can really pick up on how beautiful the wash is here on the underside due to that lighter coloration. But you don't really see how nice the wash is up here until you get nice and close and look at it. And look at how beautiful and vibrant that scale detail pops on the figure with the way that they've given that wash to it it almost looks like it's had a dry brushing but i don't think it has i think the detail just pops that nicely with the way that they've applied that wash it's extremely impressive as far as that paintwork on the figure goes it just looks really really nice you can see kind of like some of those darker areas of the wash popping up there between the rib cage as well and that wash looks great running down the entire course of the neck i love the browns that they've chosen for this the foot also looks incredible. They've highlighted the scoots down the course of the toes here with a black coloration, also something that you did not see on the Carnotaurus. And you can also see that the nails are painted, again, really nicely, given a beautiful gloss coat. And they actually have almost like a maroonish tint to them. Like, they primarily look like they're a black or a very dark gray, but have, like, hints of, like, a maroon, which is really weird. Oh, yeah, now you can definitely see it, or at least I can here in person. If we actually take a look at this foot, you can see it a lot better. Again, a really cool kind of a maroonish color that the nails have, which is very interesting, something I did not personally expect, but it looks really good on the figure and uh, definitely something I can appreciate due to its unique appearance as far as that goes. But you can really get a good idea of how nice that paintwork looks on this foot as well. The dew claws are yet again painted. They did not get skipped, so that's also a plus, but the scoots look fantastic with the way that they've been painted. Seems to be nicely dry brushed down the course of the toes. And then we run out the length of the tail, and it appears as though now we've got like a dry brushing going on with like a dark gray. So you can see the underside sports this really nice grayish coloration, but actually it seems like it's got that dark gray kind of dry brushing throughout most of the figure you don't notice it so much up here in the jaw but once you lead down here into the body you can really pick up on it here on the very bottom of the dinosaur even on the lower part of the feet if you look at it right there but you can really pick up on that kind of dry brushing right here in the lower part of the tail it darkens the tail drastically and again really nice dark tones of color used throughout the entire figure but i really like the 
paintwork of this figure. I think it just looks great overall and was definitely a very nice choice on the part of Rebor. So even though it's kind of just a retooled version of their Disney's Dinosaur Carnotaurus, it's awesome to finally have a figure of an Ekrix and Atosaurus because I don't have any in my collection at all. It's great to see that species actually get a little bit of love here. Even if it is just kind of a retooled Disney's Dinosaur Carnotaurus, it is just as awesome as the Carnotaurus itself. I will say that both figures actually balance really nicely as well, which is something that's always a potential concern as to whether or not they'll balance, and uh, they definitely balance really, really nicely. And as far as articulation on our figures go, we do have the articulation of the jaw, which I have shown you already. Really, really smooth articulation in that jaw. The arms are actually articulated, however, the Carnal Taurus's arms are super stiff on mine, so I think I will have to hit that with a little bit of warm water to kind of ease the arms up a little bit and then start to get them moving. And we do have the articulation in the tail, which now I just smacked the Icarix and Atosaurus right in the face and knocked the poor guy over. But we do have the tail articulation with the wire, which is fantastic. And uh, the Icarix and Atosaurus, if I can pick the poor thing back up again, you can see we do have the jaw articulation, but the arms do articulate on the Icarix and Atosaurus, so you can see they move really nicely. You can put them in more of a natural position into the body, which I love, absolutely love that aspect. And I definitely want to get the arms loosened up on the Carnotaurus so I can do the same with that. But of course, we do have the wire and the tail on the Icarix and Atosaurus as well. As far as a size goes, I guess we'll measure this one here, the Icarix and Atosaurus, since it's front and center currently. So for a length from the tail to the snout, you are looking at about 15 and 3 quarter inches or around the 40 centimeter mark. And then for a height to the top of the neck, a little over about 5, closing in at about 5 and a quarter inches or about 13 centimeters maybe a little over 13 centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our rebor carnotaurus and ecrix and atosaurus figures and you can definitely see that in comparison to these guys they sport a very impressive size like they are really really quite large very similar i would say in size to the killer queen tyrannosaurus from Rebor previously, but hopefully these figures in comparison will definitely show you that as far as a size goes, they are very impressive. And for a second comparison, here is the previous Rebor Carnotaurus in comparison to the two newest figures here, the Icrix and Atosaurus and the Disney's Dinosaur style Carnotaurus. And you can without question see that there is a massive difference in size in comparison to both of these figures compared to the previous Carnotaurus in both length and just overall body mass. These two newest ones are extremely impressive. So these two brand new 2021 Rebor figures, the Disney's Dinosaur style Carnotaurus and the Icrix and Atosaurus are both fantastic. Absolutely incredible. There is no other word to describe these just drop dead gorgeous and that goes for both of them. I know some people tend to have a little bit of a problem with the Icrix and Atosaurus as it's not exactly accurate and obviously is just a retooled version of the Disney's Dinosaur Carnotaurus sculpt but I really don't think personally that that takes away from the figure as Rebor does tend to give us usually stylized versions of each of the figures that they release, of each of the species that they release. That is what we see here with this Ekrix and Atosaurus. And I think it was a really cool way of Rebor to kind of give us an alternate version of the Carnotaurus because as you obviously have seen in the film, if you did in fact watch that film, there is only one color scheme to that Carnotaurus that we see, or at least that I've ever noticed. And that's the color scheme that we've been given brilliantly from Rebor here. So there wasn't really much they could do as far as an alternate color scheme goes with the Carnotaurus. So instead of just giving us kind of a boring alternate paint scheme that isn't, you know, film or screen accurate, they gave us an alternate species entirely. And it's a species that just gets no love at all ever. And I've never seen a figure of it from any company yet. So it was absolutely awesome of them, even if it is inaccurate, to give us an Ekrix and Atosaurus so that we at least have the option of adding one to our collection. And personally, even though, again, it's a lot bulkier and everything than it should be and obviously has a lot of 
an artist interpretation as far as the species goes i absolutely love it and i absolutely love the fact that i now have an ecrix and atosaurus to add to my collection so kudos to rebor for giving us one of these and it just looks beautiful as far as the sculpt and paintwork goes and again without the horns on the head it just in my opinion looks so different from the carnotaurus so it really has its own unique and beautiful appearance and then as far as the carnotaurus goes it is just incredibly exciting to finally have a Disney's Dinosaur Carnotaurus as far as like a nice high quality model goes. And they took the Carnotaurus from that film and just knocked it straight out of the park in both the sculpt and paint aspect. Like this thing just looks drop dead gorgeous here in person. And as usual captures that beautiful high quality appearance that Rebor always gives us the paint job of the figure is fantastic really nicely replicating the Carnotaurus from the film in picture perfect fashion if you ask me it just looks so good and the way that they've used washes on not only the Carnotaurus but the Ecrix and Atosaurus as well is just fantastic really giving both figures an incredibly lifelike and realistic appearance the sculpt of the Carnotaurus again looks just like it did in the film giving you that really big bulky very intimidating looking Carnotaurus like we see in the film and they just nailed it as far as the sculpt goes. Nothing crazy or overly flashy with the pose, but you don't really see too much going on with the Carnotaurus in the film that would warrant kind of a crazy off-the-wall pose. It's pretty much exactly what we see in the film, and I love everything about both of these figures. So if you are interested in picking these up, make sure you head to the description, as I will include a link there to Everything Dinosaur, where I purchased mine. Again, a huge recommendation from me would be to pick these both up, and not only pick them up, but pick them up from everything dinosaur so again check the link in the description go buy both of these beautiful figures and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching